Hey guys, this week's podcast features Krista Glenny Sechu, the food editor at Buffalo Spree and founder of Feed Your Soul Productions. Krista came down and recapped her less than favorable foodie things of 2013 with Donnie. Let's get to it. Krista, we, uh, we find ourselves in my basement. Again. The third December in a row. Really? Yeah. Merry Christmas, Donnie. Yeah. The first one was uh, the night of his thir- 21st birthday, or the night before his 21st birthday. Come on, you're not that pathetic that you would spend your 21st birthday with me and Donnie. Yeah, because at midnight we went out and had a beer. <sighs> you had one beer? I remember Oh, this. it was the he, night before. He's going to pretend I... that he doesn't remember this. Yes, it was. It was. He's too cool to remember <laughs> things. Uh, and then last year we did uh, we did one in, in December, kind of wrapping up 2012. Yeah, that was like a three-hour podcast. It was. We edited it down and Thank divided God it into two, two parts. Uh, and here we are again. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I like this tradition. I think even in 2014, if uh, eat it up is not a thing, I would still want to do this. I just think that any excuse I have to talk to the Burtless Boys for several hours uninterrupted <laughs> is okay with me. That's very. That's very nice of you to say. Come on. Um. So we're gonna do another year review. This is gonna be all about 2013. Yep. And we're gonna split up into two separate episodes. This one is going to be the. I don't want to say the more entertaining, but it's going to be the... Uh, the, the darker <laughs> side. It's going to be the podcast about uh, all the things that we weren't happy about that happened this right. year. Uh, trends, specific events, people moving, uh, things like that that maybe the general public don't know was a detriment to our culinary scene, but that we're really bummed about. Right. And... Uh, and then next week uh, will be episode 102, and we'll talk about all the good, happy things that we that we liked. And... So we're going to air out the stinky closet tonight. <laughs> yes. yes, we're cleaning out our closet. Or the refrigerator produce drawer, <laughs> like the old lettuce stuck on the side. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, let's go. I love it. I love it. We're just, we're just freestyling right here. <laughs> I'm so wild, Donnie. You, I'm unpredictable. Anyway, okay. Yes. No, so, let's and, get down and, to and it. And this year, we even, we even prepared ourselves. We had a Google Doc. We are... We are pros. We are we are <laughs> veterans at this point. <laughs> We're pros. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I think we should just jump right into it. We have yeah. a couple topics, and then obviously we'll talk about them. Um, the first one on my list is so last. Funny enough, last year we talked about uh, I believe Ulrich's uh, being closed for being tax closed. purposes. Yes, yes. And what it, a loss it was. Yes, and they kind of reopened. Uh, whatever they worked out, they worked out, but it was only temporary because. They're closed for real now. They're for sale now. <laughs> yes, yes. And Board I, it up. I, yeah, I, I don't know if they were sold already. I know there were sale processes going through. Yes, um, but it's sad still because Ulrich's was uh, it was an important place in Buffalo. It's, it, well, it still is, and yes. it will will be again. I would hope. Fingers crossed. I would hope that whoever opens it is respectful of its history yeah, and does not wipe the name and, you know, the and not very good potato pancakes <laughs> off the menu, that they that they actually, you know, open it as Ulrich's. So I feel the same way about the Rendezvous on Niagara Street. Oh. If somebody opens that, it needs to be the freaking Niagara r- I love, Rendezvous. I love, I love that you have, uh, like, uh, nostalgia for Rendezvous. Oh, I love that place. <laughs> but it really, it needs to be what it was and what made it great, yes, you yes. know? I, I, mean, I agree with that. I, if, if, if somebody goes in there and throws a bunch of drywall and has uh, Edison light bulbs on the ceiling. Yeah. It's going to be a little depressing. It's just not right. I mean, yeah. that's one of the things when we bring people here from out of town, they don't want to go to Tempo. No offense to Tempo. Yeah. But there's Italian restaurants that are really nice in every restaurant. Exactly. In every town. I'm sorry. Yes. There are not Founding Fathers. There are not, you know, yeah. uh, Ulrich's. There yeah. are not, you know, McPartland's. There are not <laughs> these like ancient totally mothballed perfect yes yeah have not you know, changed over time right and so uh i the idea of losing any more of those just yeah. kills me especially yeah. in the city core it would be a bummer and and uh we only really went like maybe twice i mean we, it's not a place so I'm, you're part of the problem donnie burtless <laughs> no, i kidding. am proud of the i'm not helping him pay his taxes back yes right <laughs> but i uh I mean, it's it's one of those places where, in retrospect, I kind of wish I went there more. Yeah, but well, I it's just, in an odd location for it, it, people it, it, who it's not part of their neighborhood. Exactly. Um, and I think that the expansion and the remodel made that somewhat better. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, the inconsistency with the food, which is what keeps people around longer in a bar, exactly, yeah. or, or you know, the inconsistency with the food was always an issue for me. I can't imagine I was the only one as picky as I might no. be. No. And I think that spot, the thing I'm worried about, is that area is going to be hot 
Very well, soon. it already is. I mean, yeah. every piece of par- every parcel of land, no matter how <laughs> shitty and yeah. in need of yeah. remediation it is, in the Buffalo Medical Campus is somebody's trying to buy it and exactly. build something yeah. on it. And so, what I'm nervous about is somebody's going to buy that place for maybe not the right reasons or or whatever the reasons are are more geared towards like this is going to be a gold mine right i'm going to sell salads and soup all day long to these like uh doctors right and i don't know so i i'm curious to see what will happen with it but it's sad that it potentially might not be the same thing or or the future is uncertain with with it is it's unfortunate yes um but we all need to keep an eye on that and make our presence or desires known if given the opportunity i agree with yeah all right. Um, another sad thing. These are going to be sad things. <laughs> it's it's a sad, sad day this in Donnie Burles' basement. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and now I don't ever know. I can't ever pronounce his name. Daniel from Daniels in Hamburg. Yeah. I don't know how to say his uh, name. I, Johengen is how I say okay. it. All it right. might be Johengen. Okay. But we, we covered both bases right yeah. there. <laughs> okay. Um, that he uh, at first closed down Daniels uh, in Hamburg. And recently it was resold to to a new owner and a new chef and a new... A, a set of owners, from yeah, what I understand. Owners, yeah. yep. um, so it's under a new regime, but that his time, which is, I think, over 20 years, uh, came to a close. And, and that he's no longer in the kitchen and, and he's no longer serving food to a South Towns area that is really hurting for really good fine dining. It's a massive loss to that area. And yeah. really, more than anything... It's a massive loss to the whole culinary scene because while some of the most uh, experienced and uh, well eaten <laughs> yeah. uh, foodies in town, yeah, people who um, know their stuff, have never been there, had never been there, and didn't really know what they were missing because it's just far enough outside of town that you don't want to have half a bottle of wine and, and drive home. Yeah, um, and so it's sort of off the radar for people who would really appreciate what he was doing. But he had a very dedicated clientele. Oh God, he yeah. had a very dedicated staff. The wait staff is coming back with the new owner. That's apparently, good. that's good to hear. Um, but losing Daniel in a kitchen here in Western New York is a huge loss yeah. for the scene and i mean if you look at someone like ross warhol yeah who came up in his kitchen and other people who yeah. spent time I know in brad his Rowell, kitchen uh, park spent, spent some absolutely. time absolutely well. brad is somebody who we will hear more and more from increasingly i mean that he's a he's mad talented yeah, so yeah. um you know it, daniel was import, a really important figure both in holding down like really consistent amazing cuisine sort of out in the middle of nowhere, culinarily yeah. speaking, yeah. Um, as well as being responsible for training and, and bringing up some really great, hot young chefs that we're even aware of. Who knows who else came through that kitchen exactly. that, that we don't know immediately. Yeah. But it's a it's a huge loss, and and, and it, it may, makes me really sad. Yeah, all right. I mean, I we ex- we lucked out extremely. Uh, I mean, luckily our our families are from Orchard Park. So it wasn't too far of a drive to go from their right. house to the restaurant. But we just went this year in June, and it took us four or five years to get ourselves to go out of our way to visit that place. And after being there just once, uh, they announced they were closing two months later, and I was I was t- super upset because like this was going to be one of my places that I would... Uh, go for a special event or go yeah uh, i mean it the food was that good i mean it's basically carmelo's of the south with yes but it's french <laughs> exactly, right so it's yeah. like this place you love and you wish you could go to every day that you feel like you won the lotto when you could sort out how to get out there and come back yes. on it you know yeah. in a decent amount of time safely and everything yeah um and it's it's just a real loss i mean the south towns do not present a lot of really oh, great God, food no. experiences I mean, besides the handful of places in east aurora i mean Right, and and that's a pretty small handful. Yeah, and but it is it is it is rough. I mean, I'm from Orchard Park, and you would think this this concentration of people who have money to spend. <laughs> no, would love money doesn't equal taste. A cheap fillet and a badly baked potato is all most people want when um, they have. Money, unfortunately, you know? Orchard Park's restaurant scene reflects that. Yeah, and so uh, it, it's a bummer. I mean. I don't know how many times I would have went there it, like now because obviously we have our own schedules and things like that. But the fact that it's not available is, is really it's a bummer, and it's an end of an era. I mean, well, that's that's the thing. Yeah, is is really um, to see anybody who came up, uh, came through Oliver's yeah. and had their own you know fantastic restaurant. I mean, yeah. it'd be like Hutch's clothing. Yeah, you know, I know Hutch's is in the city, and more people are familiar with it, but it's really the same thing. It's Hutch's yeah. clothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so and, yeah, and it's it's a testament to how busy that restaurant was for that that not that many people knew about it i mean in the immediate area yeah everyone knows about it but 
I mean, we went to dinner on a Wednesday and we barely got a reservation. Oh, yeah. No, it's it was busy. <laughs> so I think what we should say in parting yes. is that... Uh, anybody who's listening to this who knows Daniel, please give him our best and let him know that we just think so highly of him and yes. that he will be desperately missed. Yes, I am um, For both the food that he served as well as the skill and uh, level of respect that he showed towards ingredients in his kitchen that he passed on to other people. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, let's keep it going with... These aren't really close. I mean, these are closings. Uh, so Zilly Cakes closed yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, and they remained open kind of as part of a, uh, not a, a retail storefront, but as a, you could special orders. You could special order Zilly's design, sculpted cakes. Yes, yes. Uh, um, not cupcakes, yes. but her sculpted cakes through the storefront that became Firefly, which yes. is a really successful cupcake shop within, that opened in East Aurora. Yeah, that opened East Aurora, opened their second And then location. they took over the Zilly cake spot. And it was, I think it was started out as a great partnership um, because Zilly got to have a space to yeah. work in. But I think what you should probably start with is talking about Zilly Cakes. Yes, because, uh, so, I mean, the the big cupcake boom yeah. happened in, like, 2011, where right. basically five cupcake shops opened in Western New York. Only, like, four years behind the rest of the world, but that, hey, that's okay. <laughs> um, and, but we uh, Zilly really was, I guess, the, the pioneer of a, cu- a cupcake bar or cupcake shop. I yeah, mean, she- I don't, I've never seen uh, anything even similar to it in any other city. Yes. Every other city just makes cupcakes and you buy them. You don't get to go in and pick and choose and make decisions. Exactly. And she, uh, she has a a nice pedigree behind her. I mean, she's been nationally featured on, on, uh, she was in the, I don't know what the hell the name of the show is, but it's a network cake challenge. Yes. And, and uh, also, and then obviously the Smithsonian exhibit that she all had the with, news that she had because of the Obama yeah. cupcakes yeah. and the yeah no she's she's done very well for herself and she's made Buffalo really proud in yeah. terms of what she brings. There's really nobody quite like her. Yeah, and it was a bummer when she they were closing, but I know when they closed, um, they also announced that Firefly would be moving in. Yes, and I know Firefly had some more uh, maybe grander ambitions for a retail spot. I don't think they're. I mean, Zillies was still focused. I don't want to say focus, but it was still a lot of uh, catering business and, cu- and wedding Custom. cakes. And, yeah. Um, but Zilly Cakes, or Firefly, Firefly. had pour over coffee and yes. they had different things that you could order more of a in an attempt feel. to get you to like stay and yes. hang out. Yes. The problem well, is... That is did this... not work. <laughs> that did not work out. In, At least well, in that spot. In the Elmwood no, spot. No. And I think that there's a couple things. I think that... You know, because of the lack of business, even though I've never had a stale cupcake at the East Aurora Firefly, yes. Um, every time I went into the Firefly on Elmwood, I got stale cupcakes, and it didn't matter how many I ordered or what flavors I got. I'll be, and I think yes. that's a lack of a lack of business. Meant those cupcakes sat there way too long. I'm, I'm with you. On and that. I'm sorry, but the way Zilly did her cupcakes, they they were so fresh. Yes. That really the. The audience that would have gone to Firefly on Elmwood yes. knew immediately that they were getting dry cupcakes, where there are lots of other cupcake shops in town that have terribly dry cupcakes, yes. but their neighborhoods don't seem to notice. <laughs> I would agree with that. So, you know, I think that that's Zilly really set a standard. And, yeah, she did. I mean, um, they were one of the best. I mean, this is all outside information, although I consider Zilly a friend. I haven't talked to her about it, so I don't, I don't know why Firefly closed. I'm making assumptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dry Dry cupcakes aren't going to help any situation, no, no. really. And also, Elmwood is a very aggressive retail area, it or, is. or uh, uh, real estate area. And so, I mean, the, the rent is not cheap on Elmwood. Right. And so, you really have to have a very solid business going into That's it. That's very true. And so, I think we should say Zilly is working on her second book right now. So, she oh, had zombie cupcakes, and now she's working on a petite cupcake a petite baked goods book okay so everything's really tiny i'll show you pictures she let me have some it was awesome <laughs> nice. me, me and the girls went over we had a great time um and so but this the so the publishing company that did the zombie cupcake really is uh, the c- cupcake book really is loving her work and so nice i'm excited to see what else zilly's going to do but i am glad for her. she was always one of those people who was torn between being a mom of young children and having her own business and what that really means when you come down to it. Yeah. And it's very challenging when your personal and being there myself, your personal ambition sometimes has to get put in check 
because you have a very limited time to be a great mom. Yes. And so she decided it was the right thing to step back, and I fully support her because I know that we are going to be lucky and in future years reap the benefits of her being sane <laughs> and feeling confident because she's already put the energy into the kids and that yes. she's not so pulled in so many yes. directions. So, so, I mean, good. it's a great decision for her and, and I, she seems very happy with everything. Meanwhile, there's no good cupcakes. Yes, and <laughs> the downside is that uh, we... I miss her cupcakes yeah. very much. Boy, and I'm, me and too. I'm not even a cupcake person. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't even say you are a cupcake I'm not, person. Uh, you know I'm a pie girl. Yes, but uh, we both. We, we share our love of pie. We but, bonded over pie, but... Yeah, but I, I am sad that that is not available, it, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just sad. It is. It's unfortunate. Yes. Um, let's go to a trend now. This isn't a particular one thing, um, but over 2013... We've become more familiar with Rochester's food truck scene. Yes, and, and we've been lucky enough to have those trucks yes, visit here sometimes I, at Larkin Square. Yes, and I think one of the reasons we became aware is because of that, because they started to come to Buffalo. Yep. Um, I became friends with Paul Vroman, who uh, was one of the owners of- That guy's a of, badass. Yeah, he is. He was uh, one of the owners of Brick and Motor, um, which I think, I mean, their food- Surpasses any food truck food I've had anywhere, I agree. ever. I agree with In you. terms of variety, yes. quality- pricing i mean just it blew my mind it is, i would have be thrilled to have a restaurant that produces that kind of food it, it is one of those things where some of their menu items like they had duck cassoulet and if you closed your eyes cassoulet. or cassoulet i'm sorry <laughs> uh i i can't pronounce anything i love right. you donnie burles <laughs> um duck cassoulet and but it was one of those things where if, if you closed your eyes and you're eating it you could see yourself sitting on a white linen table in a restaurant right and you would think it's the exact same like, that's how i felt about everything i've ever eaten from them yeah, myself yeah and and it's not just that their one truck was so good it's that the food the the food truck scene in rochester appears to be and this is just from looking at what's opening and everything more diverse and more experimental than what's going on in buffalo well they get that here's the deal if you want especially in this weather yeah to pull people out of their cozy cubicles, yes, away from a traditional restaurant that has heat and God knows what else, yes. to stand outside in the freezing cold to eat something, you either have to be the cheapest deal in town, and in <laughs> Buffalo, you're not going to beat two hot dogs for three bucks. Exactly. You're just not. Yeah. And Or you have to be the most amazing, exciting food that people don't mind yes. standing in line. And that actually goes in the summertime, too, because it's I, hot and miserable in the summertime. I agree with that. So if you're just making... Hamburgers and you know, grilled cheese grilled sandwiches, sandwiches yes. and whatever things yeah. that I can get anywhere. Yeah, if you're not, I'm not coming yourself. out of my office away from my perfectly fine brown bag lunch, exactly, or the deli that I like to go to, or whatever, yeah. to stand outside. I'm yeah. just and eat hunched over a garbage can. Yes, so. While I support our food truck business, and, and I'm very happy here, with several of the food trucks. And, I think they're doing a great you know, job. No, I was at every common council meeting. Like I yeah. want food trucks. Yeah, I think that it's interesting because Rochester has a public that is less excited about food trucks. Yes, and less engaged in their whole food truck phenomena. And less less uh, availability to food trucks. Basically, their legislation is insane. It, right. Versus us, who have some of the best legislation in in all of the country, some of the most forward thinking governing that the freaking Common Council has ever done is about food trucks. Yeah, and on top of that, we have you know all these areas where they can go and be, and all the massive Bas- numbers of food a trucks. Weekly uh, food truck festival at Larkin. Yes, and we have the boring food trucks, and Rochester has the awesome ones. Yeah, it it was. I, I couldn't imagine it. Like, when somebody told me about Brick and Motor, I was like, oh, that's really cool that there's this one truck. And then we show up, and... There's an Arepa truck. There's an Arepa truck. A poutine, a poutine truck. truck that is doing poutine... The that, right way. The right way that I wouldn't... I don't want to say rivals the best I've had in Toronto, but, like, it could... Is would somebody came down from Toronto and I gave them late petite poutine? They would not be like, "This is disgusting." Right, and they which would, they would be over every other poutine that's pretty yes, much happening I've, in town. I've had very rare good poutine. Experience. Well, because the fries are always <laughs> soggy, and a lot of people are using powdered base for the yeah, gravy, yeah, which is yeah. a crime. But but and even then, um, like hearing like Paul talk about a sushi truck that's opening, which sounds incredibly risky. <laughs> <laughs> How cold can we keep the tuna? <laughs> yeah, but just the fact that somebody even thought of that and marty's meats which seems to be doing just anything with meat that they can think well of. you know like
like good for you for not pigeonholing yourself. Yeah. Because we've seen people veer off the off course here and it's because they have to because, you know, the thing is when you go, I say this all the time and this is a little bit off topic. When you want to open a restaurant, you have two options. You have the option of being so married to your concept that you walk all over Western New York until you find the neighborhood <laughs> where they have a building and a clientele that your concept will do well yes. at. Or... You find a great building and you figure out what concept is missing. Okay. The idea of developing a concept and then looking around f- in a very limited fashion for any space without taking into consideration yeah. what else is in the neighborhood, how much money is available in the neighborhood, how much people in the neighborhood eat out, what kind of parking there is, all of those things. Now, I'm not saying that restaurant owners are foolish and aren't taking those things into no, consideration, no, no. but when you have a food truck... It's very challenging because you're not your demographic changes every day. Exactly. And sometimes your demographic changes when you don't want it to, when you get booted out of a place or when, <laughs> you know, you're, you the place you thought you were going to be doesn't work out. Yeah. And so it's you really have to I just don't understand why you'd play it safe in that scenario because it's such a risky business to begin with. Exactly. Why wouldn't you be rocking out awesome food? <laughs> yeah. I whatever. No, I, I and I'm with you. And so um I don't want to <laughs> name names, but when you see some of the food trucks that open this year, um People are still excited because it's a food truck. Yes. And I think they're still lingering that part where people can get excited about new food trucks just because it's a food truck. And they're just excited to see our stable grow, I guess you could say. Right. But that is going to wear off very quickly. Oh, it's really worn off on me. Yeah. And if your food isn't interesting or exciting, like, I don't understand. Like, you're not going to make money just because you're a food truck. Well, no. And we honestly, at Larkin, as busy as it is... You can see yes. who's got interesting food and is offering something unique. Yeah. Is way busier or unique and of good quality, yes. I should say. Yes. Is has a much longer line than the people who who don't. They're still busy because there's twenty five hundred freaking people down there. Yeah. So you know, yeah, like I mean, everybody's I mean, doing some kind of business. <laughs> people are gonna be like, I don't wanna wait in the fifty person line for black market. So So I'm gonna go eat the crappy food where there's only three people. <laughs> but hey, it's a business it's a business yes, method. Yes. If that's how you're gonna if do it. If your business method is the runoff of people who are upset they couldn't get what they wanted, then good for you. Go for it. <laughs> no, and I you know what, it's a risky business and I understand that people have Lots of money and they're yes. full time, you know, they're working hundreds of hours. Yes, it's yeah. overwhelming. It's life sucking. Yeah. Food we, we, trucks had, we had them down here last week. Are brutal. Week. That was one of my favorite podcasts ever, <laughs> by the way. But so I don't want to dis- discard the fact that that's a really b- a hard thing. Yeah, yeah. And and I understand why people are scared. Yes. But if you don't know a lot about cooking and you don't have a distinct culinary personality, yeah. the last thing you want to do is have a menu of four things on a tiny little truck that is basically like shining a giant spotlight onto what you do. Yes. In a restaurant where you've got all kinds of other things to distract people, yeah, yeah. like... Booze. Uh, bo- <laughs> exactly. Booze, the decor, your mm-hmm. wait staff, the music. Yes. All, all that distracts people, and you can put 20 things on the menu. Yeah. You have three or four things on the menu, no distractions. You better fucking nail it. <laughs> <laughs> just saying yes anyway. i agree with you okay so i i think that it's not really i guess it is a, a reflection of a bad thing we see in buffalo but mostly i think that comparison brought it to light i i i, I don't think i would have thought that if i didn't see a smaller market have a more interesting lineup right and it, i mean you could talk about like la and in right York city apples and, and, and oranges be like, yeah, okay, it, sure. even toronto apples and yeah. oranges right but you look down the street at a city that has two-thirds of our population or whatever it is and is way sucky culinarily speaking yeah, yeah. outside of the food yeah trucks. i mean there are actual I mean, restaurants like to four go to restaurants in Tor- in rochester you would actually bother eating yes. at but they have these food trucks that are willing to try things and they rock yeah so that was a bummer but at least we get to eat them every now and then. That's right. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, let's talk about uh, Buffalo getting, uh, I'm going to say, too excited over frozen yogurt. Fuck frozen yogurt. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to be so mad. Donnie, I'm going to get really worked up about the frozen yogurt. Oh, uh, So frozen yogurt has been a trend. I mean, pink berry goes back God knows I'm sorry, years. but we used to eat at TCBY when I was in high school in the 80s. <laughs> So frozen yogurt's been around a little bit. All right. Let's there was a TCBY on Hurdle and Delaware when I moved here in 1992. <laughs> I shit you not. Yeah. So, so it, it's it been is, around a long time. It's been around a long time. Let's say the Pinkberry 
generation. Okay, the, the <laughs> sort of cooler, hipper, yeah, a little more tart. Cereal toppings, yeah. candy toppings. Funky. Yeah. Um, that has been around, let's say, 10 years. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. It's... And then, so this summer was the boom. This summer was... And and it was the places out in I'm not even remember the name uh, Froyo Culture and uh, White Rabbit and the place I don't know there's and there's there's a, there's a mang, mang, red, red mango. mango yes which is so a, whatever there's like ten total yeah, franchises and they all that are opened within six months of each other so <laughs> here's the thing first of all yeah there are qualities of frozen yogurt yes and all but red mango suck I. For everything I've had, I completely agree. Now, I and I even think that what is the one that's in the that's in the mall that's cute? Oh, oh Yogan Fruz, which, that, which has been here for maybe a little bit longer. But that yes. one was one of the was the first one I yes, think. Yeah, and even that is better. The White Rabbit and the what's the other one? Froyo Culture. Terrible. Uh, the one two on Elmwood. Yeah, fucking horrendous. I haven't been to white rabbit i guess i've been to the other one and it was watery and well, gross and- first of all the two on elmwood are serving the exact same frozen yogurt base <laughs> within within i could They're throw a sourcing baseball sourcing it from the same exact place yes, yeah that that's the other thing is that people think that frozen yogurt is actually good for you and this is what upsets me <laughs> frozen yogurt is not good for you yes it has less fat in it yes okay it does yeah but it has as much sugar and especially when you heap <laughs> 400 pounds of Count Chocula, M&M's, and Oreo pieces on this it. Is, this is my most excited it's topic to talk about. terrible for you. And I don't understand why you would not go down to the cute little Italian uh, gelato Korea, place yeah. on, on Elmwood. Yeah. And gelato is made from milk, so it is a lower fat content. Mm-hmm. And all of the ingredients are like things you find in nature. Yeah. And, and, and it's sorbet, too, delicious. Yeah. Why you would do that instead of paying $27 a pound for really bad <laughs> chemicals that melt and are watery and weird. It is horrible. If you let that stuff melt for five minutes, it's indiscernible as any yeah. kind of food product. I, I literally watched Ellie's face when we tried maybe Froyo go from so excited that there was frozen yogurt with so close to our house to as we walk outside, it is already basically half melted yep. and it just tastes like water. Like yep. there is no flavor to it whatsoever. And People got so excited. I don't understand. I, I've developed this idea over the years that if you provide the right settings, bad food can still make people really happy. Well, there's 100,000 restaurants in Western <laughs> yes. New York that prove that yeah. true. If, if you go into it excited, the, the it looks like it should be exciting. And you get this, this food that's like semi-okay. In your head, you're like, this is the greatest thing. Again, you're distracted, like we talked about with the food trucks. (laughs) Yes. You're distracted. You're excited about the poppy Japanese music or the funky designs on the walls or whatever. Yeah. And you're not paying attention to what you're snarfing down while you talk to your girlfriend with your headphones on. Yeah. And and you look in it like, oh, this is what they have in other cities. Like, things like that. Yay, we're so lucky to have somebody (laughs) serving a shit in a bowl for $20 a pound. Lucky us! Oh, this is. I was so glad we talked about this. Let's uh, let's move our discussion to Allentown. Okay. Let's talk about uh, so sample closed this year, right? And they are, I don't want to say they, but Adam gets the, and his wife, the uh, chef Jennifer, and his wife, uh, have opened a new restaurant on Hurdle Avenue called Craving, Craving. and it's very good. It's I, doing had, very very well. They're open yeah. seven days a week. They yeah. serve breakfast on Got the weekends. Got a very nice uh, review from Andrew in the paper. They're doing a lot of business there. Yes. Um, so it's good for them. I mean, they're, they're on a better place. Probably. Well, they stuck it. I mean, they were, they opened in Allentown in like 2007 yeah. and Adam was the only person doing anything that even looked like modernist cuisine yeah. in town then. And it was really progressive mm-hmm. and for me really exciting. But I remember the reviews and the early comments. People did not understand it. Yeah. And so they're, them leaving Allentown, now this spot is filled by crust, which I think is doing a very good job yeah, of what and, they and do. I, I think that is a cute little spot, yes. and I am glad to see something that fits in that space and could potentially be successful there, because the space is beautiful, but it's challenging. Yes. Um, but I think the the sadness is that they were really Allentown's only, I don't want to say only, fine dining restaurant. I mean, well, Mother's has their own niche. Yeah, that's, that's, I don't think of that as Allentown, though. Allen West only has Lottie Dog. Yes. And, and that... I've never been there, so I'm not going to comment on what it's like. But it seems like they have a demographic, and, and a they have a thing. very dedicated clientele. Yeah. They, they're not a place that people just randomly wander yeah. into. Um, 
But it was sad because it, it made me think that that type of dining couldn't exist in the area. And I know he pulled it off for as long as he could. They, when I, what I watched them stick it out through is yeah. pretty... I mean, anybody else would have gotten up and yeah. left. I mean, they, luckily, I know they had catering and things like that. that they, probably, did, they found every possible way to make to, that to space work. Because they were really dedicated to being in Allentown. And they yeah. loved that building. And they loved their neighborhood. But... Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, it was a hit to the dining scene here. Uh, I'll tell sure. you, you know, I they're friends of mine. I like to eat at their restaurant. I felt like if I didn't get to Allentown by five o'clock in the evening, I was never going to find a parking spot. Yeah. I was, it was just going to suck. And yeah. I've got two kids in tow, and it's a freezing cold, snowy Tuesday night. Exactly. And if it's past five fifteen, I'm going <laughs> to be walking half a mile to find, yeah. you know, and I, I know everybody's like, oh, parking doesn't matter. And it doesn't unless you own a restaurant, you know, yeah. if you own a place like Crust or Cantina, yeah. those, those are fine. It's yeah. casual. People come in. They don't expect to stay very long. They're not ordering a whole bottle of wine. Exactly. They're taking food to go, whatever. Yeah. But what sample started out as it could never, ever have worked. Because it was a it was destination. Di- I mean, you planned a, right. a night around it. Right. Whereas, like you said, the other restaurants, those are kind of like, eh, what do you want to do? You want to go grab a slice? Like it, it, right. It, it's it's late night cheap eats yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, but it was. I mean, I like I said, this is another place where like Daniel's like I, we only went really once. And I now looking back, like I I don't understand why we didn't go more often. Right. Which and I'm sure a lot of people say. No. Well, and people who've been to craving. I'm sure feel that there's some similarity in the feel of the place. Yeah, and yeah. It definitely there's a couple does have menu a, items that yeah. you know that have carried over. But Adam's original, you know, goal to provide sort of this esoteric, mm-hmm. slightly modernist, yeah, you know, cuisine that could be enjoyed really tapas style with great, yeah. you know, beverages featuring fresh seasonal juices and all that. That that's not this. It's not the same. It's yeah. a, it's a traditional casual restaurant yeah. now. Yeah. Um. It's a good one, but yeah. it's it's just not the yeah. same. Hurdle loves it. Hurdle's so excited oh to have <laughs> to have. You know, it's like there's such limited great food on Hurdle. I agree. With that. Um. Cravings just doing business like yeah. crazy. I remember the first like three months, like they barely just didn't stop to breathe. No, like, it was packed every day. I mean, Adam, who might weigh a hundred pounds, probably wore, weighed eighty five pounds <laughs> after the first four months they were open. Yeah, so I mean, it's great news for them. This may be a little bit selfish because I live in Allentown and and I was bummed to see it go. Yeah. But I think people might not realize who live in Allentown or who are in this area a lot that it, I mean, our dining options are rather limited, limited for places that for how many sit- restaurants you have on yeah, this street yeah the dining options are yeah limited. for a real sit down have a nice meal with somebody not ha- worry about the bar crowd that's right sitting five feet behind you that right. are just loud and annoying it, it's a bummer to see, not see that work here yeah it is so it is i think, we, I think we i'm just glad it. someone great that's great fast casual went in there i'm very happy i mean i crust I, is lovely. I, I really love crust it, it's a different thing obviously it, it's more casual I'm and so it's thrilled that go. instead of you know having to maybe eat jim's steak out on a saturday <laughs> night there's another option <laughs> <laughs> tommy's all yeah tom chicken finger sub yeah tom stinger tom will be jim steak out till he dies which will be oh uh, you steakout. will die from the jim steak out but that's okay um Let's talk about a, uh, an individual person who left our area, um, Chef Ross Warhol, who was doing his thing in the Chautauqua Institute. So maybe not on the radar of most Western New York people, right? But he should have been. He should have been, and we tried. We, uh, we both, I think, we spent him a lot of time. time writing about him. He would cook five months a year at yeah. the Chautauqua Institution's Anthony M Hotel, yes. where he. Put in a garden and was doing farm to table cuisine oh, and transitioned the regular sort of cafeteria style dining into a far better yeah. um, sort of a la carte menu for people who stay at the Anthenaeum during the beautiful season that the yeah. Chautauqua is So his audience was open. limited. His audience was limited. A lot of us, you know, have come to know him. So I should say that in the five months that he wasn't at the Anthenaeum, he was traveling all over the world cooking in the world's best restaurants. Yes, yes. You know, he was at El, El Bulli in Spain, you yeah. know, considered the number one best restaurant and in the country per, and for personally a, in invited. The world for like a decade. Yeah. Personally invited. He did not put an application in. No. They came to him and asked yes. him to come. Yes. Uh, because he met 
uh, Ferrand's uh, younger brother, yeah, Albert, uh, right? Yeah. When he was cooking uh, for the CIA. He was at France and Lindenburg, which yeah. is, you know, an amazing restaurant that just does the coolest, coolest stuff. I actually think more highly of it than I do of Noma, um, wow. despite the fact that Noma is more popular and people know Rene Redzepi's place better. Yeah. Um, you know, and several other places. So he's, you know, he's really been all over. I mean, he's yeah. cool enough that he, he knew Grant Ackett's was insane and left uh, a couple <laughs> couple weeks into his stage there, didn't waste his time. You know, so like I, I love Ross and Ross is tremendously talented and he has temporarily moved to Galveston, Texas to head up a restaurant that I cannot the Pelican Club. The Pelican Club. Yes. That is largely a steakhouse. Yeah. Um for, for family friends that I believe invested in the restaurant and own it. And um they're providing him with uh, some financial stability that would be hard to find elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and the great thing is that I think much like John Carroll of Vera, <laughs> he will be back with a you know a bank full of cash, and yeah. we will we will reap the benefits of Ross Warhol for years oh to come. Oh my God, I, I, so, I'm counting down when the I two know. of them come back to. My I place. know, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess we could even talk that John Carroll left too. Yeah. Uh, well, so we'll get so we'll get to him next. Yeah. But so Ross is a Ross is a wonderful guy. He's tremendously talented. Um, uh, he's pretty humble, like real deal yeah. humble. Yeah. Um, one of the most want- generous uh, podcast guests that we had. That was just treated me with more respect than I feel he, like I deserve. I mean, the, I met him, I think it was 2008, and he was like 19 or something. Um, and, and he just, his skill then just blew me away, and it's been wonderful to watch him grow and to see him get engaged yeah. and to know his mom. And like, I it's a, I just love them, and yeah. they're great, great people, and I'm excited for Ross to come back here, and it's not just because he took good care of me when I got way too inebriated in karaoke in Toronto and made sure I got back to my hotel at oh, five in the morning. Got it. He's such even, a good guy. I'm even more mad that I was I there. really should never, ever be drinking with those boys. It was bad news. Yeah. But anyway. But so, I mean, Buffalo might not realize what they're missing right now. They, But they, they're they going to be shocked when he comes back and, and opens, opens a place. Whatever they're, opens. You know, they're going to be like, holy shit, how did we live yeah. without this? And this kid, by the way, he's 25, maybe. 26 something like that maybe he's baby he's baby yeah but he's super talented he's super dedicated (laughs) and he's exceptionally responsible and mature and he wants to come back yes he said it i he's i i've heard Uh, he's definitely so let's talk about john carroll because i you when you just mentioned i totally forgot that he left this well that's because we still see him all the time (laughs) (laughs) rochester is not that but he's not behind a bar in buffalo making us happy on friday and saturday he is making rochesterians happy some Rochesterites, maybe. <laughs> uh, he he, along with the guy at uh, Taste Good, Good Luck. I always say Taste yes, Good, but yeah, Good yeah. Luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, down the street are really changing the way people in Rochester think about cocktails, much the way John did that here in Buffalo. Yes, and that means they have a uh, magic man, snake oil salesman in their midst, and they're very, <laughs> very lucky. And I am very, very jealous because it is just not the same without John Carroll. It isn't, and that's no detraction to the the current Vera staff. At Absolutely all. not. It's uh, no detraction to any of the staff in any no, no. of the great bars that we love to frequent. Because Exactly. they make phenomenal cocktails. Yes. But John is a unique individual who brings something unique to the scene in a way that he is like, welcomes people into his presence, yes. unites them in a way where you all feel like you're part of some family. And he does that with his staff. He does that with his guests. Yeah. He has... You know, I mean, it's almost a drink the Kool Aid sort of like, you know, I would agree with that. Uh, ability that thank God he uses it for good and just really gets us drunk. <laughs> and but he's not Jim Jones. He's not, thank God. <laughs> uh, but he really does have this ability to make people feel like they're part of something and that they're accepted and that what they bring to the table is of value, even if they're just a bar customer. Yes. And we we our scene has it hasn't. Ch- downshifted without him here. No. But the momentum that we were gaining with all the other bartenders in town and just the entire scene exploding True. has changed because I, he is not here. Yeah, I think if you sent him to other bars and restaurants and he talked to their bar managers, he's somebody who could get them excited about trying different cocktails and juices and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And that's no detraction to anyone who's still here, but he has that personality that 
you, you, it becomes infectious that you all, all of a sudden I He's really magnetic. care. Yeah, all of a sudden I care so much about cocktails. Where right. as nine months ago I could not have cared less. Well, I mean, even and I'm a good example. I like to think of myself as a pretty open person, but there are just some things I don't like, and I'm not like a huge tequila fan. But John and I have spent so much time talking about tequila and tasting tequila together yes. that while I'm still not in a position where I'd buy a whole bottle of tequila, <laughs> I have a level of appreciation for it that I really did not have at all. Exactly. Six months ago, exactly. You know, so, so and and I just it's not it's not just selfish. The scene is slowed down. The yeah. growth that it was experiencing has slowed down without John here. And fortunately, I think that we'll see John back at some point in the next couple years, which is I'm being very I don't want it to be that long. <laughs> um, and that we will, you know, hopefully have some other rock stars here by then as well. Yes, and that that will just make the whole thing explode. I agree. Okay. Um, Who else? Talk about, uh, let's switch it to a, a trend, um, copycat restaurants that opened this year. Jesus Christ. So a, there was a lot of new restaurants in 2013. I mean, a every lot. year every year there's a lot, no, but it but seemed like this year. Well, you know, we went through that period of, with the recession where a lot of places closed and we didn't have a lot of places <clears> open and whatever, yeah. but 2012, we thought we saw a lot of new restaurants. 2013 was insanity. Yes, and I, we didn't even keep up with We tried our best. I didn't even try. Yeah, and... I was like, I can read someone else's blog about <laughs> the new restaurant. I'm too tired. Yeah, um, <laughs> but the downside of that was that a lot of these restaurants restaurants were not exciting at all well that's the problem is and, very few of them are actually newsworthy and by that i mean so i think the spaces are very pretty i think some of these restaurants that open this year look very nice and there's a lot of buzz because they're in the city of buffalo and in places like buffalo rising will hype up a new restaurant that's open sure um, that's what buffalo rising does yeah, it's their job yeah and which they do a good job of mm-hmm. uh but the menus and maybe what they said versus what they actually had, uh, for somebody like myself, was not very exciting. Like the the what they were offering really didn't make me like get out of my so seat. And be I like, think what Donnie Burtless is saying is that, is I'm that a food he's snob. had enough crab cakes. <laughs> he's had enough Atlantic farm raised shitty salmon entrees. Pork belly. He's had enough lame pork belly because now, belly. like, there's pork belly that's great, but yeah. not much of it. Yeah. Most people don't know how to cook it properly or whatever. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of coconut shrimp, bad, like, 90s, yeah. Yeah. crappy. There's a lot of uh, truffle frites. Truffle frites. To me, it's like <laughs> Olive Garden with a non Italian menu. Yeah. Like, all these places are offering the sort of homogenized, not very carefully made, yeah. cheaply in- cheap ingredients. Yes. You know, like food that I don't know. I don't know that I would have made twenty years ago. No, and I think I don't know what they're. I think they're just getting away with that. There's a new shiny place, and they think that's enough to bring people in. But like, if you have a in, in cocktail menus now, like a lot of these places have a cocktail menu. Yeah, well, and, there's five lame cocktails, yeah, and a half of them use flavored vodka, right? Which is so not <laughs> like, the point. I don't, you could get that anywhere. So it's well. It, here's the thing: it's them misreading trends. I think. I think there's that, and I also think there's another problem, and this is going to become a problem that's going to be something that we're going to have to like actually as a community address. Yeah, there isn't enough talent here to support the number of restaurants there are. Like, if you're a restaurant and you need, you're a restaurant owner and you need to hire an executive chef in Buffalo, mm-hmm. your only option is to try to lure one of the. 15 great executive chefs out of their job yeah. by paying them more money or promising them more. Yeah. It's not like there's 20 great chefs wandering around looking for jobs in this town. Yeah. And half of the chefs who are in this town are making that kind of like lame country club food because yeah. that's the only way that they were taught. Yeah. And, you know, their palates are off and they're not tasting their maybe cuisine. They haven't and been outside Ordering of everything from Cisco and they're just slopping it together. And so... The problem is when someone, I, I cannot tell you how many owners come to me and say, Chris, did you know anybody who's looking to leave their job? Yeah. Like, do you know who's who's coming up? Who's good? Who's young? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Because there's no talent. So the idea of industry night was to try to make a scene enough here that the young people would stay and not yeah. when they hit that $15 an hour sous chef job, decide that they want to go live somewhere else. Yeah. Right? So... That's why we started Industry Night, and it's a lot of why Mike and I do the things we do, is we're trying to develop a culture where better food can be found, and that requires talent, 
there's just a sh- huge shortage of talent based yeah. on how many restaurants have opened in the last two years. Yeah. And so we need to start either importing some really talented people or we need some people to step the fuck up and start putting salt on their food and tasting things <laughs> and dining out in other restaurants and having some kind of experience yeah. beyond whatever it was they were trained as. Yeah. Because, you know, people need to go to New York City or Toronto or they just need to experience other things. I, if, I, if I was still making the same food that I learned how to make in home ec, right? Yeah. Like, we all need to grow. Yes. We all need to have experiences. We okay. all need to change. In our job, if we are to remain relevant in this society, I agree with you. same with me. I mean, I have to learn new skill sets all the time in order to keep my job as an editor or whatever. Yes, uh, we all have to learn new things. Yeah, you're a chef. You're cooking the same dishes and the same kind of food that you were making seven or eight years ago. Yeah, there's a problem. Exactly. Okay. Uh, let's uh, talk about. We got two more topics. Yep. Let's talk about the speaking of the scene. Let's talk about. Um, so we've both had discussions with people privately, uh, and there's been public discussions about maybe uh, the scene's acceptance of other people, or or how how open the scene is. The to, food scene. The food scene. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I I think that's unfortunate. The thing is, I I first of all, I I was always the outcast in school, so the idea of like now people thinking that somehow I would be exclusive or not yeah. welcoming to people the is tastemaker. horrifying to me. <laughs> um. But the truth is, is that I can't be best friends with every single person that I meet and that my goal is to really grow the scene as much as possible. And that's why we've done all kinds of exciting things to make the scene accessible. It used to be, and this is part of why I started Nickel City Chef, when I was writing about food a post a day for three years, you know, Joe Blow down the street would be cooking something and he would think he'd found something new and exciting and he'd be like, man, and I can't find where to get this ingredient or nobody else knows how to do this. And I'd be like, oh, well, the guy down the street knows how how to do that how come you haven't met him yet <laughs> i don't have time i never eat at anyone's restaurant i'm always here yeah. so the idea of all of these people meeting and interacting and growing from each other and sharing information yeah. now when steve getter doesn't have a dishwasher he calls <laughs> james roberts or mike a and yeah, says yeah. hey do you got a dishwasher i can borrow tonight like that wasn't happening five years ago. Yeah. So we've made the scene for all of the people who work in the scene far more accessible. Yes. They all know each other. They all share cell phone numbers. They have Facebook groups. They do things together. That did not happen five years ago. Five years ago, you had Paul, Jenk- you know, Paul Jenkins, Mike A, and Hutch were buddies and Daigler to some extent. And like, that was it. Nobody else knew each other. Yeah. And so in that respect, the scene is more open than ever. Yes. And in terms of being sort of, you know, a foodie or a person who wants to hang out with that type of person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, industry night, nowhere else can you go in town or in most towns. Oh my God. If I, I mean, I talked to people on that San Francisco trip and I talked about in and... I, I mentioned like they, somebody I was like, why are you hanging out with chefs? And I was like, well, we have this thing like every yeah. two weeks that basically most of the, the important chefs in town go to and, and a lot of the cooks and restaurant and the folk. dishwashers yeah. and the owners. And we kind of all just hang out and there's a theme every night. And like they could not believe right. that there was like this open event where you could just meet the most talented chefs in the area. So you have the opportunity, <laughs> if you're remotely interesting, to yes. actually make friends with yes. anybody in the scene that you want to, because they're right there in a position where you can talk to them unless you are yes. such an introvert that that's a challenge for you. Yeah. And really, I can't help you if yeah. that's the case. I, I would I would say, like, anyone who is interested in knowing the scene or who people who like to eat and are really impressed or want to discuss with people that they respect. Or let's be honest, all you girls who want to sleep with a chef. <laughs> We get plenty. We got plenty of those. Yeah, there's plenty of chefs there's, that will sleep there's with a girls. Lot, well, there's also a lot of girls groupies, but whatever. <laughs> there's room for everybody. Yes, yeah. It, it is. People are. Uh, if you, if you're interested and, and you and you have wanna, something to say, say, have something to say. I mean, everyone that we are friends with, I think, would be open to talking to a stranger. None of us are have attitudes. And me, we yeah, meet yeah, people everywhere us, yeah, we go. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So, so the, the if the if there's any impression that it it's a, a cool kids club that we don't want to have anyone else, it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. Yes. Let's talk. About, uh, let's start to wrap this up with a discussion of a cool kid. Yeah. Um. So this year, uh, so I would say both of us last year put our meal at Mike A's. As one of the best meals we had in 2012. Yeah. yeah. And 
And it was. I and mean, it was, it was yeah. th- that that tasty meal that I had two tasty meals at my case in the first year they were open blew my mind. Yeah. And a, a, a large part of that uh, is because of uh, Ed Forrester, who Ed, is, who Ed is Forrester. their chef. And um, so this year, Ed and, and Mike A's split ways yep. in, in August. It was actually when I was in Italy. Yeah. Oh, was it really? <laughs> yeah. I got. I, I remember checking Facebook and uh, seeing the status. I was like, what okay. the hell is going on? Yeah. It's like, well, I guess I have to update his Buffalo Foodie article. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, and so they, they, they split their own ways. Mike A's is still obviously a restaurant that is operating. And, the cuisine and, is very different, but it's, you know, Mike's yeah. been very successful with the food yeah. that he offers Buffalo, and it's, he does a great yeah. job. And it's good Ed, food. And Ed has his own project, uh, the workshop, which he came down here and we did a podcast after his first uh, outing. Yep. So it's like a po- an ongoing pop up. Yes, so you yeah. find it on Facebook and like it, and that's how you know when the pop up's exactly. going to happen. And, and even crazier stuff, too. Like now he's got these uh, <laughs> bitters that he's making yeah. that are like really specific and crazy flavors that you might not find anywhere else. Yep. So, and he's writing for Buffalo Spree. Yeah. So he's, he's a busy man. He's very busy. But part of me was uh, we, I went there for my birthday meal, Allie went there for her birthday yeah. meal. Uh, we took Tommy for his birthday meal. Like that was our, or not your birthday meal. I'm sorry. When you got hired, uh, your, your big boy job. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's big uh, boy job. but, uh, I mean, it was a place that, uh, the first place that came into my head where I wanted to have a special meal right. was at Mike A's and, and I don't want to detract anything from their current staff. They're probably doing a great job, but for me, the ambition and maybe the, uh, standing out from the rest the of the restaurant excitement scene. yes the excitement uh in in the trust in ed all were things that made me sad when they split ways well for me it was really that that's the only place in town in a long time that i've gone to where i was having mind-blowing food experiences yes. not just and i shouldn't say just not simply food that's done exceptionally well yeah that's balanced and prepared perfectly and artfully plated and all that stuff which i can find yeah. relatively easily in yes. other restaurants but shit that made me go what the fuck when i was eating <laughs> it and i love that because yeah. i have so many meals and so many f- great food experiences every year which i'm very lucky to have yeah because i also eat a lot of packaged ramen but whatever <laughs> you know i have these great food experiences punctuated by bags of ramen yeah uh but i think that um you know Ed was the only person who really has really just blown my head off multiple times yes, in a meal. Like, oh, and then you match Tony's cocktail pairings. It was it was, it I was mean, literally a match just, made. In, I've had 100,000 wine and cocktail pairings in my life. 100,000. Everyone's, the goal is, I think, with most people is to just make sure they go together. Yeah. Not to make sure they sing. Tony's pairings fucking sing they make you feel like you're on fire they're like but, amazing when we had the the croquette the onion soup croquette in that uh amaro, amaro cocktail. cocktail like i re- remember your face just i or the menth he had like this oy- oysters rockefeller that had like this menthol flavor yeah. going on in it that he paired with a delirium tremens <sighs> unreal unreal and see i remember that because yeah. it was such a mind blower and, and i think what we should say ago. is that we i this is no way a brag but both of us eat out a lot and we, we are do. and like you said we are very fortunate that we, we have, have some pretty amazing really great meals yeah when it takes me i have to sit down and think about my top five meals like i literally have to go through and figure it out and that's just because of both of our passions for eating and having good food and as Honest, in all honesty, as we do what we do longer, we get bigger, High, better the standards in, in the, the invitations standards, yeah, yeah, and experiences that too, yes. are, happen. But us. also, our bar gets higher and higher. Well, that's true too. And pretty soon, those ramen noodles aren't going to cut it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, now, and and I don't want to take away what what Ed's doing with the workshop because I'm excited to see where that goes. Of course, and, and that's going to be exciting. Not. This year, I mean, it is exciting, but... He has a lot of other things up his sleeve. It's going to be more exciting in years to come. Yes. But the it fact that... It was a major blow to not have a place where we can go get Ed's food five nights a week. Yeah. And major it, blow. And it's it, it really made me sad. When he posted that Facebook status, it's still... It's heartbreaking. It was a bummer. And uh, 
and I, you know, I hope for the best for Mike A's. I hope that the direction they went in is very successful. Right, and, and works I, for them. And but for me personally, I mean, I, I think I think well, it's that's a, the thing. A, We're talking from a completely selfish standpoint right yes. now. I'm not talking about what's good for Mike or the hotel or even Ed. Yeah, from a perfectly selfish standpoint. To not be able to go in and have fine food prepared by Ed yeah. Forrester on any given night of the week, yes. to me, is a major loss. Because yes. it was a major freaking win when it happened. Yes. We talked about that. Yeah. I mean, forever we talked about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge loss. Yeah, it is. And uh, and, and we but, love you, buddy. Yeah. And yeah, and <laughs> I, I, I cannot... I, it, it, Whenever he announces whatever the workshop becomes, which I'm assuming eventually would become a restaurant... Uh, or whatever he calls a restaurant. I, I, the day, the day that happens, I will be there. Like, w- uh, sign you waiting. up your card carrying yeah, yeah. member. I will be making a reservation the day he announces it. Yeah, basically. No, I'm really excited too. Yeah. And I, and for people who didn't get to have that tasting menu experience, <sighs> who didn't have a Tony Riles cocktail paired yeah. with an Ed Forrester dish, yeah, man, you fucking lost but, out. <laughs> the thing about that dinner, I mean. We were a very select group that was invited. Yes. Well, it's a press dinner. I mean, yeah. we go to those all the time, yes. quite honestly. But, I mean, the people who were there, me, you, Nina Barone. Well, we were at a very small table. Yes. Yeah. But, but I mean, people who know food and who aren't just going to be excited about anything. Right. And and all of us who have had Who aren't great... just like, free dinner, yay. Yes, exactly. You're like, oh, another fucking free dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, people who, it takes a lot to really Impress blow us. them off. Right. And everyone left that meal thinking like buffalo's dining scene was at a different level no i i couldn't agree more yeah i mean honestly there's i will never forget some of the dishes and some of the pairings that we experienced yeah. in the time that that place so, was open. It, it's a bummer and i think more people are probably bummed about it too not just the two of us <laughs> but uh but for me that was one of my my bigger losses this year it was a big loss but i think we should in all fairness say you know that you can still get a great meal. Yeah, yeah. You I saw Mike, your picture. I mean, Mike, A's, Mike A's food is still you know hard to beat in this town. Exactly. And 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 you know it's I've a had gorgeous s- setting. It's a wonderful place to eat. That seafood bisque that I had there the other day was freaking impeccable. Yeah. yeah. Impeccable. Exactly. And you know he served me this really kind of funny tongue in cheek <laughs> dinner for my birthday that I wasn't expecting. It was really sweet. I mean, I, I the food there's great. Yes. And I think and the cocktails that, are still outstanding. Well, Tony's still there. The wine's still great. Yeah. I think you know. It's still a super restaurant, and I'm I'm crossing my fingers that more and more people in Buffalo begin to recognize that there is a restaurant. There are several restaurants in that hotel, yes. and think of it as a dining place, a dining destination, in the same way they think of Elmwood or Hurdle or anywhere yes. else that has a lot of restaurants. I agree. I think that wraps up our, our disappointments this year. You ready to do another one? <laughs> Wind me up. Krista, thank you uh, so much for coming down and talking Always, about Donnie. the things that we did not like this year. I love talking to you. <laughs> and it's even funnier when Tom has to be quiet for a whole hour. I know. I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much for coming down. Thank and, you. And uh, let's talk about the things we like. All right.